Hi folks, welcome to Fusion Friday number six and the first one of 2016. 10 Fusion 360 tips. Tip number one, you don't have to import everything into the cloud and thank God. Click on the drop down menu, new design from file and that'll let me say click on this I just file and here I can import it, never went up, uploaded to the cloud. Downside, you can't import, say, SolidWorks files that way because it needs to go to the cloud to do the translator, um, but still a good feature. On that note, Fusion 360 does do a phenomenal job of importing other CAD systems like SolidWorks files. Here's a good tip. This is an assembly that I imported, and if you've ever done this, the first thing you tend to notice is that you can pull these things away and that doesn't tend to help. So this is really kind of a, a hack tip. But let's say I just need to start building some of the joints. And let's say I only want to have the joint for this block to say go up and down. What I'll do is I'll turn, I'll click on that block. If you see here subtly, couldn't be more subtle, hint, hint, fusion folks. I hope you guys can improve that. It's underlined. Turn the light bulb off. Now it's hidden. Drag a box around everything and go to assemble rigid group. Click OK. And now if you turn that punch block back on, it's free to move. Everything else is rigid. Actually, everything else can still move together. So we'll say ground this base plate, right click, ground. And now everything else is rigid and we could create a joint origin and a joint motion just for this one guy. Keyboard shortcuts. I love them, learn them. One of the great ones is the S key. When you hit the S key, it brings up a search thing and you could say type in line or spline or mirror. Awesome way to avoid having to go up to these menus at the top. Don't laugh, but I asked about putting post processors up in the cloud. You can do it. Go to your name, click on preferences, and under cam, if you do enable cloud libraries. Why would you care about that? It's useful because if you set up a new computer or you hop on a new computer, your posts should be with you because who carries their posts around on a thumbstick? And the beauty of Fusion 360, say my computer crashes or I'm on a new laptop or I'm somewhere else but someone's got a Tormach machine, I can post the code, uh, we're good to go. Because you design things in place in Fusion 360, it can be really hard to select things when you want to create, say, a joint or a sketch. And this is something we're working on which I'm excited to share with you guys later. And one of the things I noticed is that the joints are displayed. This wasn't even meant to be a tip, but if you click on the light bulb, you can hide those joints there. In my opinion, usually pretty noisy. Let's say you wanted to create a joint at the center of this piece here, but when you move down here, it, it moves to the, the piston. Hover over this, hold down the control key, and as you're holding down the control key, it'll let me go select on that center joint origin coin, and it's not gonna update. If I let up on the control key right now, and hover around, you can see it shifts over to what I've actually moved my mouse over. Another note, you can see I've got this red part here, the OD tube, uh, opacity adjusted, simple outside tube, right click, opacity control, and adjust it. Great way, because I want to leave it there, but I don't want it to be, I want to basically work uh, on stuff inside of it. My new Fusion 360 acronym, NCSS. It works for me, I kind of remember it. New, component, save, select. When we go to a file new, the first thing we do is create component, then I'm gonna save it, and then I'm gonna select that component, NCSS. I write it down above my monitor. Again, just helps me with my workflow. I hate that word, but the Fusion 360 team uses it all the time. I learned a great tip, again, from my buddy Kevin over at Mechanical Advantage. Let's say you're trying to create um, a tangent, two tangent lines between these. The way I used to do it was hit line, and you know sketch to a line like that and then hit tangent this to this and then this to this which works better way to do it sketch your line hold the shift key when I hold down shift that line is tangent and as I snap after I snap it to here see how it snaps to that tangency right there same thing same thing over here start my line hold down shift it stays tangent let it snap to, move around, there it snaps to tangent. Super useful. Thank you, Kevin, for that one. If you want to delete a constraint, if you hover over it, you can actually have this constraint and hit the delete key. 
But if you want to recreate a constraint, you don't always have to go over here to the sketch palette. Click on the two things you want to constrain. I'm going to hold down the control key that I can select on both. Right click and look, you already have those options. We just deleted the tangent, but if you right click, you can recreate that tangency. Actually really useful, uh, again, avoids you from having to go over and find that sketch palette. We mentioned this in last week's video on redoing the knife project, but if we hit, say, L for line, and we sketch a line between these two points, the best keyboard shortcut ever is to select this and hit the X, immediately turns it to construction geometry. Love that one. The last tip, also from last week's knife video, which I think is so cool, and I never would have figured this out in a million years on my own. If we hit L, you can say click somewhere, drag over, but now if you, when you push the mouse down to end that line, if you hold it down and you start sketching, you're automatically sketching an arc. Really useful way. Can't believe how easy that makes it to create geometry on the fly. I love moving quickly in Fusion 360 and in life, and I know a lot of folks have asked me to make sure the tutorials are slow enough for folks to follow along, so hopefully we're doing that. But I also wanna show how fast you can move in software like this. We actually just finished 30 days in our shop with no SolidWorks. We opened it a few times. We had some legacy models that we had to post code out of, but we're now, I, I don't need SolidWorks anymore. It's awesome. I actually opened up SolidWorks the other day to start something and I was hitting the D for dimension, it didn't work, C for circle, and I realized, wow, I've crossed over that threshold. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions if you, in the comments below. Otherwise, I appreciate the thumbs up, comments, and liking the video. Take care. See you next Friday.